So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, I will be talking about Kitab al-Fitan, which is probably the most important book when it comes to the end of time prophecies in Islam or Islamic eschatology. And uh, so, I'm going to be talking about him. This is a book written by him that has more than, two, I think, 2001 to be exact. It's about 700 some pages in the Urdu language. And it has about uh, 2000, uh, 2001 narrations. Okay, has 2001 narrations. And so, this is an absolute must book for the people that can read the Urdu language. And for the people in English, I will be talking about many, many of the traditions that are mentioned uh, in, this, uh, in this book. Okay, um, and uh, then I also want to share with you that, you know, kind of like the prerequisites. Uh, this is Hadith 2001. So, I want to talk about the narrator. Who is the narrator? Naim bin Hamad. Okay, he is the most important narrator and is the largest narration in terms of collections of Kitab al the the chapter of fitans and tribulations and trials uh, throughout the ages. Okay, and so he has 2001 narrations of the Prophet just on this. Now, some are strong, some are weak, some can be collaborated, some cannot be collaborated, but nevertheless, it's a very, very important uh, work. And the other thing is, is that in addition to the asanid, the narration that someone said, that someone said, that someone said, that, that how strong that is, we can also look at the narration and see how well it fits into the larger context of Akhirul Zaman and the ahadith that are authentic. And does it fit the, the ones that are not authentic to see which ones fit into the other narrations that are authentic, even though they themselves may not be very authentic. Okay. I also want to just reiterate that, uh, uh, Global Vision 2000 will be having a conference about two weeks from now. I'll be talking about that. Uh, I want to mention that in order to understand Kitab al you have to study uh, Dr. Uh, Umar Zaid's books. Obviously, you agree or disagree, you have to be aware of Sheikh Imran Hussein's works. He is the founder of this uh, tradition, of this, of this branch of knowledge. Allah has blessed him with that. And, uh, and then... Of course, the Islamic Party of Britain, run by uh, uh, Brother uh, David Musa Pitcock, um, and there are many, many others. I'm just pointing out a few that what are the resources, okay? Inshallah, may Allah uh, include me amongst the resources in this subject, amongst other subjects. Uh, and then, uh, so now we will continue to talk about uh, Nu'aym bin Hamad. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, I want to talk about the great Muhaddis Naim bin Hamad. Okay, uh, when the Muslims captured Khorasan, the area of Khorasan, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu that were in leadership, they asked the tribe Khaza'i to settle in Khorasan. So they settled in Khorasan, and in that tribe, they had a birth of a young uh, uh, birth of Naim bin Hamad. So Ahnaf bin Qais, radiyallahu an, he went to Khurasan, he conquered it, and then in that, you know, from the uh, tribe of Khaza'i was born uh, this uh, this uh, person, this great muhaddis who would be born. Okay, Naim Hafiz, Naim bin Hamad bin Mu'abiyah, bin Mu'ab, ibn Haris ibn Hammam bin Salma bin Malik Khaza'i. Okay, that was his full name. And uh, what happened with him was when he initially, uh, you know, was born and his first inclination was with the people of Jabariya, with the people of Jabariya. People of Jabariya believe that death, everything is destined. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're going to hell, you're going to hell. If you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do about it. But later on, he did Tawbah from that. Then one day, he had a dream of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had a dream of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reason I'm talking about this, for those of you that know and have been studying the signs of the Day of Judgment, is that this is a very important person and I will explain why. And you will hear about him more and more. And he's going to be more and more important um, in, in terms of the, uh, the Ilmul Akhirul Zaman or Ilmul Fitan, the knowledge of the Fitan and uh, the knowledge of the last days okay in both ways 
he's extremely important. Now, Naim bin Hamad, he uh, was born in Khurasan. He first became interested in the Jabariya Aqida, but then he left it. He had a dream of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet said to him in the dream, Oh uh, Hamad, uh, you know, uh, Naim bin Hamad, uh, you are moving away from my traditions. Okay, you are moving away from my traditions. So he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet of Allah, how could I be doing that? Uh, you know, why don't, why don't you, why don't you do dua or uh, do dua for me that some of the chapters of hadith, they come into my chest. As you know, in hadith books, everything is chapter by chapter. There's Kitabul uh, Salah, there's Kitabul Nikah, there's Kitabul Bayu, there's Kitabul Zakat, Kitabul Jihad. There's different chapters. He, 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 and, and, and they had awareness of this at that time. Meaning, it, Islamic sciences had developed up to that point, which uh, I will also uh, let you know about the times he was in. But the point is that he was born, uh, and he had this dream, right, uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet grabbed him by the chest. And this is how he started to turn towards uh, studying of the hadith of the, the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, he uh, was, when, when you look at the muhaddisin like Darul Qutni, Zuhri, uh, Ibn Habban, uh, Ajali, you look at uh, Imam, uh, you look at any of the great, uh, 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 you know, uh, of the great muhaddisin, uh, Ibn Hajar, radiyallahu uh, anhum ajma'in, may Allah be pleased, well pleased with all of them, and with Naim bin Hamad also, may Allah be pleased with him also. And uh, they they all uh, praised him whenever they talked about him. They praised him, said positive things about him. Okay, and so uh, he was also a student of the Hanafi fiqh. He was a student of Abdullah bin Mubarak radiAllahu anhu. He was a, a student of, but even though he disagreed with the Hanafi fiqh, but you know at that time there were many fuqaha and many different opinions. And but the point is that uh, he was the teacher of Imam Bukhari. He was a contemporary of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. As you know, when the whole situation happened with the khalq of Qur'an, the creation of Qur'an, right? One of the few people that stood up against the, the wrong idea that Qur'an is a creation of, of Allah rather than that it is the word of Allah, which is the opinion of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Qur'an is the sifa of Allah. It is the kalam of Allah. It is the word of Allah. It is eternal. It is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the speech of Allah is eternal. Okay. He was put in jail. He was put in chains. And this is how he passed away. And when he was about to die, you know, he said that put these chains on me when you bury me so that I will argue with Allah against these people that have done this. And so he was one of the few that stood up with Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. You know, he tried to escape to Egypt, but anyway, he was caught. And he was taken to prison and he died that way. Now, what is the importance of this man? Look, I'll explain to you. When Jibreel والسلام, comes in the famous hadith known as Hadith Jibreel, right? And he talks about Islam and Iman and Ihsan. And then he asks about the Day of Judgment. And then he asks about the signs of the hour. Okay, why talk about the signs of the hour in this concluding remark? Right? This is just a few months before the Prophet passes away. And Jibreel has now come to summarize the whole of Islam. Okay? He's come to summarize everything in a gist, to give you the, the overview of what it, what has transpired in the last 20 some years. What is this that has been given to you? So he asks, what is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And then he asks about the Day of Judgment and the hour. Why does he ask about the signs of the hour? Because just like in the time of the companions of the Prophet when there was the great fitan in the time of Ali radiallahu anh, and it was very confusing to see who is right, who is wrong, who's on haq, who's not on haq, right? It, everyone was turning to who? Everyone was turning to Hudayfa. Hudayfa was the Sir nabi he was the secret keeper of the Prophet. He knew about the ilmul fitan, he knew about the, the knowledge of the fitan the nature of fitan and he is the one who's one of the major ones who sided with Ali radiallahu anh, because he knew from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who are the munafiqeen who are the people that are on the haq even the Muawiyah radiallahu anh, 
he was a companion of the Prophet, but he was no way in shape or form equal to Ali radiallahu anhu. This is a whole separate issue. They're both companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but there was a big difference between them. You can say the difference between the sun and the moon. The moon gives light too. I'm saying this based upon a narration of Umar radiallahu anhu that somebody said to Umar radiallahu anhu, "I had a dream." that the moon and the sun were fighting. There was an army of the suns and there was an army of the moons. And Umar radiallahu anh said, which side were you on? And he said, I was on the side of the moon. And so Umar was upset with this particular gentleman. Okay. And so, uh, so anyway, uh, the, ilm, the ilm al akhir al zaman is there to guide you like they were being guided by uh, Hudayfa. At that time, that critical time, he was the one that was guiding them. Look, Ali is the right one. This is what the Prophet said. Don't go upon what is the zahir of the events. Go upon, because the zahir of the events may be, you know, Hassan, uh, you know, uh, may have been that Us Uthman was killed by the sons of Ali, or the zahir may have been that they could have done uh, better to take, re Ali could have taken revenge of the people who, to, who, killed Uthman, but Ali didn't try hard enough. And all these issues, you look at the zahir, the appearances, but you're not able to see the reality. Hudayfa radiallahu anh showed them the reality. He was able to show them the reality the same way Huday, uh, Naim bin Hamad, he is able to show us beyond the appearances of things. Beyond the appearances of things. You have to be like Khidr, that can see into the reality of things beyond the, the zahir of things. Okay? And so, how can we in today's world, in this confusing, chaotic, chaotic world, see into the reality of things? You will have to use people, great people, great teachers like Naim bin Hamad to try to understand which direction to go in. Okay, this is why in the completion of the deen, he came to teach you your deen, was the words of the Prophet about Jibra'il coming in the completion of the deen. Right? Why the signs of the importance of there? Why the signs of the hour are there? So that you can direct yourself in the right direction, knowing that this is the truth. And it will see beyond the appearances and everything will make more sense to you. And your iman will increase. See, when the signs of the, as the signs of the day of judgment increased, what happened? Islam got under attack. Then iman, our iman got under attack. Then ihsan has gotten under attack. All these have gotten it under attack at different levels in different shapes and forms, right? We overall lost our ihsan. Then we've overall lost our iman. Then now we're overall lo losing our Islam. We have lost our Islam since the fall of the, uh, the Khilafah for more than a hundred years now, I think. No, yeah, it's been over a hundred years. Anyway, the point is that uh, how can you navigate in these difficult times? You have to know the portents of the hour, the signs of the hour, the signs of the fitan, and understanding where you're being attacked from. And to understand this science, you have to not only know tr traditional sciences, not only do you have to have a firm knowledge of the Quran, and the firm knowledge of the sayings of the Prophet, and a firm knowledge of the Islamic law, and the Sharia, because they will attack the Sharia. You have to know the Sharia to protect the Sharia. And you have to know the deen to protect the deen, but you have to also know the political system, the social system, the economy, the banking system, where we are in history, where we are going in history, the phases of history as described by the Prophet ﷺ. You have to know the signs of the hour to be able to recognize where you are and where you need to go. What will happen in particular countries? What will happen in Iraq? What will happen in Syria? What will happen in Turkey? What will happen in India? What will be the fate of China? What will be the fate of Israel? What will be the fate of the Arab nations? What will be the fate of those that support any of these nations? This is all given to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, so the policies, the strategies of even the Muslim countries should be based upon Kitab al -Fitan on the ilm al akhir al zaman because if you want to be on the right side don't go on the zahir if your policies are based upon the zahir you're going in the wrong direction okay aqul qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir muslimina wal muslimat make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah